Welcome to Well Springs of Faith. My name is Father Jurgen Leas. I am a Roman Catholic priest. I live here in Melrose, where I've actually lived for 33 years. I'm also on the staff of St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church in Stoneham. Coincidentally, our guest today grew up there, so I'm looking forward to hearing about his childhood memories of the parish I'm working at. But we welcome to our program uh, Peter DeSantos, the, the father of Peter DeSantos, who is an Anglican priest now. We'll hear that part of the story, too. Uh, but he's actually someone I've gotten to know a little bit recently, but this is an opportunity for me to get him to, and you, to get him to know more deeply. Welcome. Thank you. You know, our program is about one's journey and faith, and sometimes it is circuitous. Sure that sounds is. like it will be with you, yeah. just the little yeah. I know of you. But thanks for being willing to come My on pleasure. the program. My pleasure. And I already gave well, we the cat out of the bag that... You know, as Some you start, your, your spiritual journey started in yeah, Stoneham, really but, but wherever it started, t t talk about your journey in faith, how you came to know the Lord. Yeah, so I had an idyllic childhood, a happy family, uh, Catholic, Italian, lots of cousins, lots of relatives, went to church every Sunday. It, it couldn't have been a better childhood. Um, but it was shattered uh, early on. My dad got sick when I was about 10, and, wow. and he died when I was 13, pretty wow. tragically, leaving a widow who had, my mom had MS. And oh my gosh. I had five brothers, and um, so it, it shattered my faith because he was so religious, he was so spiritual, and we prayed so hard and so long, and I felt like, God let us down. Yeah, so boy, yeah. I went into a tailspin spiritually. Wow. I told my mom I, I just couldn't go to church anymore. I, uh, I was disillusioned. I was hurt. I was wounded. I was angry at God. Yeah. And I, I went to work because my mom was crippled. And um, at 18, I left home and set off to figure it all out. And it, within two weeks, I had a very profound experience that changed my life forever. What happened? Well, I was actually looking for a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the answer to everything. The, you know, it's funny. The, <laughs> I was just reading the other day, Cyril of Alexandria, which is, we're talking about like the fourth century. Mm. And he's writing about how God uses anything to get people oh, in the yeah. church. And he, he mentions, yeah. we, uh, he, and he tells a story about a guy who was chasing a gir his girlfriend. <laughs> and that's why he came to church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, God has used girls and food, too, in my life to bring me. But I was looking for this girl up in Burlington, Vermont, uh, where she had lived, and she wasn't there. They said they didn't know her. And I was leaving, and on the sidewalk was a mailbox, but it wasn't really a mailbox. It was a box counted, painted uh, in the psychedelic form of the 70s. It was 1974. Ah. And it said on the front, what are you looking for? And I thought to myself, I'm looking for this girl. And then on the side of the box, it said, where have you been? And I thought, well, I've been kind of through the ringer. And on the other side, it said, where are you going? And I stood there thinking, I don't have a clue. This I'm living in a tent, there. driving around with $300, my inheritance. And, and uh, just then, these two men approached me. And they looked like Jesus. They yeah. were Jesus freaks, right? Ah. That's what they called them. Yeah, Long hair, the days, Jesus robes, people. Yeah. sandals. The Jesus movement was going on. That was it. I, and they asked me a couple of questions. They said, do you know Jesus? And I said, sure, I know Jesus. I'm Catholic. <laughs> Doesn't everybody know Jesus? <laughs> and then they said, but do you really know him? I said, well, what do you mean? They said, do you know him personally, like, like right now, presently? And I said, I don't know. And they said, well, would you mind if we pray with you? I said, yeah, sure. I thought they were going to do the Hail Mary or something. No, yeah. and, and they, they put their hands on my shoulders and started to pray. And within seconds, something came over me. And oh. I literally, my knees just trembled. I fell down on the ground and I cried. Oh I God. could not stop crying. Wow. Uh, it was so powerful, so emotional. It was such a, it was like a watershed thing. And when I got up, everything was different. What, what did you think was happening to you? What I had no idea. You knew, no. I had no idea. You just was sort of I naively wasn't vulnerable to yeah. whatever happened. I, I was so open because I was so hurt, so wounded, and yeah. I loved God. I, I, my dad always said I was going to be a priest someday, ever since I was three or four oh, years really? old. Yeah, so I had a calling, but then, you know, after he died, and then, of course, two weeks later after my father died, my next closest friend, my grandfather, died. And, oh. 
and it, it was it was yeah, a little this, traumatic. Loss, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of loss. loss. And, and and I looked at God saying, if this is what you do to those who love you, yeah, boy. But it's like Teresa. Yeah, I don't want to be your enemy. Yeah, yeah. For <laughs> Teresa Babylon said, yes. she said with, yeah, <laughs> where you treat your friends, God. <laughs> yeah. So no wonder you have so few. Yeah, exactly. She was having a bad day too. Yeah, well, we all do. Yeah, yeah. My God. So that really was a that was profound. Converge, it, it, the Holy it was. Spirit just came the, the Holy Spirit came on me, and when yeah. I got up, everything was different. I, wow. I didn't feel the same. I, I, I was I was completely different inside. I, was, I felt happy for the first time since I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and then I was like a sponge. I would go from church to church. To, I went to Pentecostal. Yeah, what did those guys say? Do you remember what they said? They didn't yeah, say no. much. They, they left. <laughs> <laughs> they left, and I was standing there alone. Just like, the Holy Spirit that was it, and, and they're they gone. They were gone, and so I well, spent... Well, God, that's an that effective form of evangelism. Boy, I'll tell you, it was, it was stunning. Yeah. I'd like to run into them again. Yeah, yeah, still around. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so, I mean, you just started then kind of put, you might say, some understanding on top of this experience. Yeah, well then, incidentally, because I don't say coincidentally, I don't believe there's coincidences right. with God... I ran into a rather famous family. I didn't know they were famous, the Von Trapp family of the ah, Sound of Music. Yes, of course. I started, working on, I started yeah. working on one of the farms, and uh, they were, had just gone through a renewal, a charismatic revival. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and had prayer meetings in the back room oh, every wow. morning at 10 o'clock. So uh, I spent uh, every morning in their back room, and uh, it was very very uh, instructive to me. Yeah. It was rebuilding my faith. And they, were they, were they uh, Catholic? Yeah, they, they were, they were predominantly Catholic, yeah. but the thing but, was... But the thing was an ecumenical. It didn't that, matter. That was the time, particularly when the spirit of movement oh, yeah. it just broke It was down. very oh, ecumenical. There was, the denominations yeah, there was people coming and going from all over the yeah, world. Right. And I met Corey Ten Boom up there, and just a lot of interesting, oh, yeah. uh, very influential people. Right. And then I went into some monasteries, because I'm thinking, wow, you know, it's, I feel like I got to do something for God, and um, th those didn't work out you for me. You were exploring, though. possibly. I was exploring, a call. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was into a number of them, um, but then I had this. I had heard this story from Werner von Trapp, who, when they fled uh, Austria, they came here in '39 or '7, and then when the U.S. got involved in the war, he joined up in the army with his brother, and he made a vow to God. He said, "If you bring me back here to America safely, I'll build a chapel for you." And three years later, he came back, and he spent the next 14 years building a little stone chapel by himself up on top of the hill behind the, the trap filling lodge in Stowe, Vermont. And when I saw that and heard that story, I thought, this is amazing. This guy's not a priest. He's not a preacher. He built this chapel just to thank God. <laughs> and then it hit me like, I got to do that <laughs> because I felt I didn't go to war, but I felt like I'd been in some battles and, yeah. uh, and he, God brought me through it. So I, I had a desire to build a church. Wow. And so in 1997, I started in Dover and I spent three years building Grace Church, cut oh. the trees down, gathered the stones. Wow. The whole thing, because uh, I feel very grateful to God. Yeah. I, and did you, I mean, besides building the building of a church, did you also build a community? Yeah, so that, that, that's right. Yeah. Worship there? Yeah, well, we started in my home. And, and this was your, basically, uh, literally a church plant. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't use those words back then. No, no, and Catholics no. wouldn't know, you know no. what that is. <laughs> no. House church, you know. <laughs> right, right. It was a, started out as a prayer meeting oh, in my oh. living room. So this was like in the mid-70s, <laughs> late 70s? Well, in the, you know? when I started a church, no, it was in the 90s. 90s, so this was yeah. later, yeah. Yeah. From that age. Wow. Yeah. So tell us uh, what happened to that community and what happened to you in that community? Well, things, um, things shifted and changed. We were affiliated with one group and another. And um, I eventually, after I built the church, realized I need to be in connection with the larger body because yeah. we I mean, were you were really sort of an independent yeah we were uh, independent and, congregation i mean it has its was a sort of evangelical it's, charismatic yeah, somewhat but very liturgical you also you I mean, always it, kept that yeah kind of your yeah Catholic I, I, sensibilities i have i i love the liturgy yeah. i love the smells and the bells you know <laughs> the incense and all of that so um but i realized to to go on i'm getting older that i needed a, some group behind me to fill in and yeah in the eventuality that I'm done. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so that's why I affiliated just a couple of years ago with the Anglican okay. Church of England. 
Okay. So the church, um, now was the church you started in, in Burlington or in Dover? No, it was in, in Dover. So I moved. Oh, okay. I, I left for I, I got missed. I thought you were building another church. It yeah. was the idea. The idea was planted was from in the me up there. So what you do from the 70s when you got that idea to the 90s? So then I went into, did some seminary studies. Oh, you was, did. was ordained in an ecumenical Franciscan community. Oh, really? I had been in uh, Western Priory up in, oh, in yes, uh, Benedictines. I did Vermont. some stints in some Trappist monasteries. And where'd you and go to? The, what kind of seminary? It was, was in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh. It started with a bunch of uh, different clergy, and Catherine Coleman was involved. Oh, really? And, yeah, and, uh, yeah it, was, it was a very charismatic group. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, as I'm, I, uh, uh, you probably know, I mean, uh, uh, maybe you don't know about my own life because I was growing up in Episcopalian, um, but then had a profound, well, different from yours, but still a, a, one of those moments is profound experience of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that changed everything, like you said. Yeah, uh, just and uh, so I was very involved in the charismatic norm, particularly in those days, which as you're, mm. as you're articulating, it was incredibly ecumenical. It was sort sure of like was. all the denominational barriers, not only within Protestantism, uh, but between Protestantism and Catholicism. Yeah. Enormous. It was beautiful. Uh, it didn't uh, matter. Walls you... that fell, and there was just, yeah. just, just this unity in the spirit that yeah. was very deep. Right. Sadly, a lot of that's yeah. gotten lost. Doors got but, closed for that, yeah. but it, there was beauty. It didn't yeah, matter what yeah, denomination yeah. you were. Right. We we're all kids right. of Christ. And, and how worship. did you think, you know, having been brought up Catholic, did, I mean, you were just like going with the flow? I mean, or how did you think about yourself and your relationship to the Lord and the church? Well, I had some issues with, with the Catholic Church, yeah, I, yeah. I have to be honest. And um, some of them were from my childhood. And, and seeing some things that just weren't yeah. right. And um, I realized God is bigger than any church, institution, or organization. Right, right. So I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but I couldn't in full good conscience uh, remain Catholic. And I wanted to get married and have kids. Yeah, right, and, uh, right, right. You know, Wait, now, where did really that part of your life, well, how did you, you haven't mentioned your wife yet. When did that all happen? Uh, 1986. Oh, 86. 86. And where did you meet her? In Vermont, at a prayer meeting. At a prayer meeting. She at a prayer a, meeting. A, a Christian. Yeah, yeah. And, at a prayer meeting. Met each other, got married. Yeah, yeah. we did. So I, I didn't know the history of your. Uh, I know that your church now has become uh, part of the Anglican Church, which I, which, yeah. which I was part of for a while before I became Catholic. But you built this church. Was it an old church you bought? Or you no, no, built I built it. it. I, you I've actually a, built the same Yeah, church. I've been doing carpentry my whole <laughs> life. You really? So, yeah. <laughs> that, that. yeah, that's why it took three years. <laughs> yeah, no, I literally cut the trees down. Oh, how and, interesting. And how interesting. saw a mill. Sort of like what you know, God said to St. Francis, rebuild yeah. my church, and yeah. he thought he meant it literally. <laughs> so he went out. Yeah, well, I took it quite literally. Yeah. So you built that church. It became yeah. kind of a... Uh, uh, it became a first aid center, yeah. mainly for a lot of wounded Catholics, because yeah. as soon as we opened, the, that priest abuse scandal hit, oh, yeah. and they were leaving Catholic churches, and uh, I had done an interview with Eileen McNamara, who wrote an article about us in the Boston oh, Globe, wonderful. and we got an influx of a lot of people, and some of them are still there 25 years later. And it sounds, you know, when it, when, you know, of course, I came from a product, uh, uh, baptized Lutheran and, and, and Episcopal, and I said the charismatic renewal. <coughs> But I, I remember the Lord gave me a vision. It sounds like you, he didn't necessarily give you the vision, but you fulfilled the same kind of vision that drove me. You know, I remember hearing someone talk about a church that was fully evangelical, yeah. fully Catholic, and fully Pentecostal. Uh -huh. That it pre proclaimed the word of God and was yeah. biblical. It was Catholic in the sacramental life, the liturgical life, the sense of historical connection, and it was charismatic, Pentecostal, filled with the Holy Spirit. It sounded like you were that... That's well, I actually doing. heard that expression once, the three strands yeah, the or three something, strands, and, right, and right. Uh, yeah, I guess in yeah, some ways yeah, yeah, we yeah. certainly are. Yeah, yeah. I know. And People it's walk in and they say, oh, it's a Catholic church. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they hear me preach and they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. this guy's not like a Catholic church now. <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. start speaking in tongues, it sounds like yeah, a Pentecostal That's a whole, whole church. other thing there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it's been a great journey. I just love seeing people come in yeah. who've had struggles with their faith, right. uh, maybe lost it, or it's been in the back burner, and they, they re rediscover yeah, yeah. the goodness of God. The goodness of God. Yeah. And, uh, 
So it sounds like just been a great adventure for you. It has truly been an adventure right. yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, and 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 as you just said, uh, talk a little more about your decision from going and being a completely independent church, in, in terms of your your governance, but obviously not independent in the sense you were clearly connected, as I said, with the kind of this this totalistic view of the church as. Yeah. You know, well, I think it's just a matter of me coming to grips with my mortality yeah, and my yeah, limited yeah, life yeah. here, lifespan yeah, here, right, yeah. and what becomes of the church yeah, after me. I, we, I, we don't have, yeah. you know, yeah, a system yeah, in yeah. place. So I, the Anglican Church of New England seemed to be the closest fit, and I, right. it took me a lot of years to come to that decision, to decision and, and to yeah. work into yeah. that. Um, but it seemed like the closest fit. Yeah. Well, having been, as I said, not only part of the Anglican Church, but really my last years as an Episcopal priest was mostly involved for the development of what became the mm. Anglican Church. That's what I've heard, A lot of yeah. the people and leaders, and I have great uh, uh, joy in them. When I retired, however, God sort of had another plan for my life. Yeah. Bishop Murdoch, who was oh, the I bishop then, had plans for my life. <laughs> but God, <laughs> yeah. My retirement life. But I wound up uh, going in a different direction. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm part of this thing called the ordinary. Do you know what yes, that is? Because it's really Anglicanism yeah. being grafted back into the Catholic Church. I've been very interested yeah, in yeah, that. Yeah. You were the first one I've ever heard yeah. about it, and I heard this and a few so, years ago. So I don't see like I've abandoned my Anglican background, but, mm -hmm. but, but Pope Benedict, uh, you know, it's quite interesting. When he established the ordinary, he said, we want you who come from an Anglican background to bring your Anglican tradition and patrimony, is the word he used, to the Catholic Church to preserve it and to share it. So it wasn't we were just becoming Roman Catholics, but we were mm. becoming Roman Catholics, but with, with, the, with the patrimony of Anglicanism being mm. sort of like a branch being grafted right. back onto the trunk of the yeah, tree. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I met Pope John Paul twice. I had private meetings with him, and I met Benedict. When I first met John Paul, one of the things he said to me was, um, bring a revival to the church. Wow. Yeah. Mother Teresa, I met her once, she said was pretty much the we, same thing. Was this thing. when you were in, up in uh, Vermont? No, I, I was in Rome a oh, couple of times. Oh, you were in Rome. So you have been hanging so, around the big shots, right? Yeah, and I was Corey just... Corey Ten Boom, Von well, Trapp. Mother and, Teresa. It's funny how Lord just lays people in your life. Yeah, I was just in Rome for the canonization of a relative of mine. Um, Nunzio Suplicio, Suplicio was canonized a couple of years now ago. Now tell me who that saint is. Well, he was from Naples area, yeah. and he died as a young boy. He had this wound, and uh, there's a lot of miraculous things attributed to him. I used to hear about him as a kid. Never really? thought much about him, but, uh, <laughs> but he's a, a, a couple of years ago we heard he was being canonized, and so I was invited to go to the oh. ceremony in Rome. And, oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah, so I've been in the Vatican a number of times. <laughs> Those walls are thick and tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> well, I have been there, but not uh, not talking to the Pope directly. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Although uh, my claim to fame is, as you probably know, maybe you don't know, um, only the Pope can dispense a priest from the vow of celibacy. Um, so when I was in the process of becoming a Catholic priest, I had to get a dispensation. Uh, it's a, called a nihil obstat in uh, oh. In a, a, a uh, oh no, that's not. There's another word they call it. A, a I forget that uh, it's everything's in Latin there. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a particular document, uh, and and in fact, the funny thing is, I was approved for ordination the first week of February, uh, in 2013. The second week of February in 2013, Pope Benedict re resigned. If you remember. Mm. And of course, sure. I don't know if it had anything to do with my approval to be, <laughs> being ordained. But the problem well, was I couldn't be ordained unless I got his signature. Oh my gosh! And of course, I wasn't exactly at the top of his uh, <laughs> priority list. Getting he wanted to get out of there. Yeah, he did. But eventually, we got his signature. Oh my gosh! So somewhere in the archives of the Vatican is a p piece of paper with Pope Benedict's signature and oh. my name on it. But uh, and I, they won't even give me a copy of it. Oh no! I wanted to frame it, but I can't get one. Well, that's a great story. I, I was actually almost going to hear a funny story yeah. about the Vatican. I took my mom there, uh, and I got an invitation for her to meet the Pope, just John Paul. And uh, so he's sitting in the general audience first, and we're about this far away, 10 feet maybe, and he's talking in four or five different languages. Yeah. And all of a sudden, my mother yells out, she's legally blind. Right? Oh. 
who's that man talking? <laughs> and the Swiss guard came over and like were jabbing me with their spears. Salancio. And I said, Mom, shh, it's the Pope. And she says at the top of her lungs, that's not the Pope. <laughs> and they all came rushing towards us. They were ready to drag us out of there. <laughs> it was pretty funny at the time. Is your yeah. mom still alive? No, she passed about oh. eight years ago. Was she a, stayed a devout Catholic? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we had lots of uh, discussions about issues of the faith. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when, when along the line were you actually, I mean, you started your own church, you started doing ministry. When were you actually ordained by anybody? Okay, or? yes, it was uh, 40 years ago in August, this past August, so it's been 40 years. That was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, in that seminary? Was at the, that, yes, it was. And, with, and, and who were you ordained for at that particular point? Well, I was uh, sent to Virginia and did a startup church down there. Oh, oh. Yeah. Was it I a was particular a, denomination? Yeah, it was, it was the Community of the Crucified one. Oh. And right. I was so assistant was pastor in Vermont for a couple of years. And, oh, okay. And then so you were part of some of, the, oh, yeah. some, of, some of these other mm -hmm. yeah. groups. Uh, was yeah. that also a relatively new kind of denomination that it, emerged? It started in the, the Jesus it, it, it started, yeah, exactly, yeah, in yeah, the late 60s, yeah, yeah. 68, I think, or so. Yeah. Right. And it's disbanded, and we, we separated from it in the yeah. 90s or something like that. You know, it's interesting. We, we, we were old enough, but um, and I'm sometimes uh, I, I hang around with younger priests uh, in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. and, um, and just to how often, the, you know, history gets lost so fast. Oh, yeah. They never heard about the Jesus movement no. or all that. And after right. sort of this rich history of the yeah. Holy Spirit's movement, yeah. uh, Including, of course, as you know, the Jesus movement eventually hit the Catholic Church. Right, and there was priests from Steubenville yeah, over there, Steubenville Father Mike and, Scanlon, and right, these guys right, were all and, part and of that. All that early incredible, the charismatic that renewal. I was in. Yeah, and even though the charismatic renewal has died down in the church, I've uh, the effect of it. I find many, many people who are the most committed Catholics mm. and, uh, in lots of situations uh, are, are are people who were really had a profound yeah. conversion through the charismatic. It's like the preserving power, yeah, I guess, yeah, of their faith, that, uh, sustaining. And there's kind of a rekindling of it. Uh, um, I'm, I'm part of Hopefully. a Hopefully. I'm part of a group called the Fraternity of Priests, which grew out of the charismatic oh. role in uh, Steubenville. And, and we meet every week. I was meeting with really? them yesterday. And there's like, a, for example, there's a new ministry called the Counter Ministry, which is an effort to rekindle the idea of, of really uh, Holy Spirit ministry of mm -hmm. healing and of uh, deliverance. Yeah, and, I've heard of that. And, and really yeah. kind of rekindle mm -hmm. a real dy a dynamic aspect of uh, power ministry yeah. in the Holy Spirit. Well, they used to do what was called the Life in the Spirit right. seminar. That's right, right in, those in the Catholic Church. So this Church. is yeah, kind of a re yeah. repackaging of that. Good to hear that. Kind of the encounter it. with the Holy Spirit <laughs> ministry. Yeah. So. so what's That's going? Good. Tell us a bit about your parish and what's. Well, it's we're we're on. a mix of probably uh, ninety eight percent Catholic background. Oh, really? People, um, and yeah. so I do the Catholic liturgy, which they love and they're yeah. familiar with, and they and they. Yeah, love no, it. I know my dear buddy Joe Cunningham hangs. Oh, Joe that. comes down. So we, we he, he's yeah. We get a few uh, interesting folks. Yeah. We've had uh, a lot of young families coming in. Oh, I think wonderful. I did ten baptisms in the last couple of months. Oh, wonderful. Do a lot of weddings. Wonderful. Which is, which is great. I love doing the weddings yeah, and the christenings. Yeah. And tell, tell us a little about the people who are coming. What, what's their background? What's well, uh, again, I, I think that uh, they felt like the church failed them. Yeah. To be they honest. They basically ex-Catholic. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But, but like I said, they didn't quite want to throw the towel in okay. completely. And so how did they find you? That, that's word of mouth, the question. Testimony, a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot drive by. So a lot of people tell me they drive by and they look at it and they think, oh, that's a pretty looking place. I gotta go there. Oh. Yeah, there's probably 20 people that found it just, just from driving, driving past oh. on their way to work or whatever. Wow. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. Well, that also though is Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'll never forget my parish in Malden because we were in renewal, and some guy was just jogging by. Yeah. And he, it was Sunday morning, he usually went out for a jog, he didn't go to church. He was jogging by, but I believe it was Palm Sunday, the door was kind of open or we were parading yeah. around. And he decided to come in and the Holy Spirit just landed on him. <laughs> he cool. wept like you uh. for the next two hours. Our liturgies were wow. two hours long in those oh, days. <laughs> and he wept and, and then he, he became a, wow. a 
deeply, deeply co converted so in Christian. Wonderful. Just walking by. That's how Joe Cunningham came. He was riding his bike oh. on Sunday when all the churches were closed during oh, COVID. Yeah, the pandemic. And we were still open because yeah. we have a big outdoor garden. Oh, worship. so you had He said, hey, this is a church open. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell me a little, because I've never been there. I'll have to come out and visit. Yeah. What, what a typical liturgy like is in the morning in terms of it being kind of a, obviously Anglican, yep. but also... Uh, all the stuff, all the di different directions. You yeah, so um, it's very similar to probably what you do, unless yeah. you're doing it in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm doing> it. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's basically... So you do the, the Eucharist every yeah, Sunday. Every Sunday. Use the, yeah. use the Anglican prayer book. Yeah. 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 Wow, how interesting. Back, actually, back to some, tell, tell us some of the stories of people, what... Had they left the church? And what, what a lot of them doing? had. A lot of them, you know, st started coming and still had one foot in the old church yeah. and and gradually realized they were getting fed more yeah, at, that's at right. Grace yeah, Church. That's right. I think that's the thing that I've heard the most, that the, the sermons, the preaching yeah. wasn't satisfying, wasn't fulfilling, wasn't nurturing. Right, right. It just wasn't doing it in a lot of places that some of the people yeah. have come from. Yeah. And they needed more. They wanted more. There was a hunger. You know, so it wasn't, you know, I, I, I particularly in the Episcopal Church, I, I, a lot of Catholics went there, but they were running away from the Catholic Church, I would say. They, yeah, yeah. It was, you know, they didn't like, uh, they liked yeah. the more liberal aspects. Yeah, of we didn't get that, but no, we got the opposite. Right. They, they're you're looking right. for something even more, more conservative. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I think is interesting, and you may be just tapping into it. This is even true in the Catholic Church. Young people want meat. I mean, they want mm. something solid. Yeah. Something that's clearly countercultural. Yeah. That's what the church is supposed their, to be. I know it's supposed to be. <laughs> uh, to raise their children. Yeah. In. And so you're providing that. Uh, and, well, I hope to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so we have three minutes left. Uh, Great. What else about your life? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I feel really blessed. God has uh, been so good to me. And if He can do what He's done, with me, um, then I think there's hope for everybody, yeah. for every situation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wandered around for five years. I hitchhiked around the country. I was technically a homeless person yeah. for all those yeah. years. Yeah. Um, lived off the grid for five years with no electricity or running water. Um, and in all that time, God was always there just trying to Bring me to the place. Well, you know, now. this might be a good way to end the program because obviously it began with your deep, profound, um, I don't know if loss of faith in God, or the death of your father. Crisis. Your father. Crisis. Yeah. What would you say if you met you at 13 years old? Yeah. What would you say to I that know what, boy? I know exactly what I'd say What'd to that boy. Say? God knows best. There's a plan, there's a reason. And I know today I wouldn't be where I am now had my father not got sick and died yeah, when I was yeah. 13. It's not like God like is killing people no, off. No, it's not. But no. he redeems stuff. Yeah. And there's the Uses afterlife. Stuff. Yeah, right. This life is so short and eternity's forever. Right. <laughs> and I know my father's there. It's, that's right. Yeah. 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 So that's that's the joy now that I yeah, that you I can know. look back. And yeah, God's ways are not man's, no, and yeah. we can't try to understand everything He does. Yeah. And when we do, that's when we end up in a dilemma, because yeah. He's incomprehensible, that's right? right. <laughs> and, and actually, God also gives us the freedom to be mad at Him. Yeah, he, that's he the amazing thing. Yeah, He, he doesn't say, talk well, about you want to be mad at me? I'm not going to talk to you right. anymore." Talk about forgiving, no, merciful. Yeah, yeah. He can take it. He can take it. Hey, thank you, Peter. This thank has been a you. wonderful conversation. Blessings on your ministry. Thank Blessings you very much. Blessings on Grace Church. It's in Dover. I suppose people, can, yep. someone out there looking for a lively church, um, uh, a faithful ten, yep. church. Ten o'clock on Sunday mornings. Grace Center church Street in Dover. In Dover. Yeah. So, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, conversation with uh, Father DeSantos and. Uh, uh, we thank him for his testimony and witness. And God is after you too. Uh, he's always after us. Uh, not to punish, but to love uh, and to embrace. So know that. God bless.